Hey beauties, I am checking in with you to share about, um, <clears throat> surprisingly, the latest uh, Avatar movie has, you know, the one about water has a section that's quite tantric that I think many people miss um, because they're not necessarily paying close attention. But of course, being in the tantra world, I noticed it and was like, wow. So I thought I'd point it out to you so you can uh, <clears throat> maybe go back and see that part of it again, because it was quite powerful. Um, I was actually like kind of jaw dropping, actually. You know, one thing about movies that happens is uh, there's disclosure a lot of times. So what that means is, um, <laughs> There's this weird arrangement with the old school world that we're actually coming out of, but that they would disclose truths um, through movies so that it's not like in your face, but it's kind of an easy way to accept a truth or something that they purposely hid from us in a way that's kind of easier and more palatable um, through a movie experience. So anyway... <clears throat> If I can jog your memory, if you go back and remember how they were killing whales, the bad guys in the movie, uh, and then they had this machine that they would bring into the whale's mouth, and then they would excrete this Amrita fluid from the brain of the whale. And they talked about it being worth so much, like millions of dollars or whatever. And the reason why they were after whales is because you can get so much of it because um, they're such a big animal, you know, in one swoop. And so they would drain that whale's body of the Amrita fluid that is part of the tantric process. So, um, I believe they used the word Amrita, if I'm remembering right. But at any rate, I knew that's what it was. Um, because that's, you know, it's funny how in Tantra, men have to learn how to not ejaculate and, and lose their life force energy unless they're trying to create a new life. And then women have to learn how to ejaculate, right? So... <laughs> All these fluids are very sacred and much more powerful and potent than we usually know. Um, there's all of our sacred fluids are very powerful and <clears throat> are used in ceremony and whatnot. And hopefully we can reclaim those practices. So this is one of them where you may or may not have heard how Amrita is that sacred fluid that women ejaculate. And it's, it stems from the brain first, and then it cycles through all the way down the chakras and out through the ejaculate, and it um, can kind of like even recycle in this circle, you know, up to the brain and down and out the vagina. So anyway, I just caught that. It was pretty quick, um, but they did mention it, and then they talked about how expensive and how much money they make out of it and that it is like the fountain of youth as far as keeping you young, you know, for years on end. And I think that was part of the disclosure is that it does have that ability. So most of the time, a lot of sexuality is dormant in us, just like they say much of our brain is dormant in us still because it hasn't been completely activated yet and will be that's what it really what a ascension is is it's activating all these parts of us in our brains and chakras and so forth um our energy bodies you know all these things lighting up and activating and waking up it's a process because we couldn't just wake up all at once because it would be too much for our system to handle so it happens in a progressive nature and that's why like new moons and full moons and eclipses and all these things help us along. <laughs> and so there is something to be said for getting that 
up and running, let's just say, that part of you. So if you're a woman who has never ejaculated before or gotten in touch with that fluid and the ability to secrete it, this might be your seed planted that it motivates you to seek out tantric uh, sessions to help you bring that about. So the <clears throat> the Daka or Tantrika who did that with me was Charles Muir. He's the founder of the Source School of Tantra Yoga, of which I am a graduate of the different levels that he provided and taught me how to do um, sacred spot sessions in which I incorporated into my Tantra sessions after level two because spirit said you're going to do this with your clients in your sessions and I and it's a little invasive you know for some and so I was like how am I going to sell that one spirit because that's a little bit much for some people and he and and they said it's all about how you talk about it and so now I know how to talk about it and they're like okay I trust you you know and I introduce people to that part of their body, you know, their sacred spot that we activate. And it's also called prostate massage. You know, it's where men's G spots are. And it's also very pleasurable for women in that backdoor area to activate it um, because there's way more pleasure when you do incorporate it into your pleasure orgasm. Um, but it also is part of sexual healing. It keeps your prostate happy and healthy and it's the only way to really reach your first chakra as far as like healing and like just health maintenance and well-being um it's a much deeper orgasm that you get because like all those base notes of pleasure are showing up now and so it's a big part of like if you want to be everything you can be it's part of your journey okay well Learning how to ejaculate as a woman is another initiation that we can choose to have to uh, get that, that sacred juice flowing in our bodies so it's not just dormant. And, uh, you know, it's part of staying young. Otherwise, it's just dormant. It's not flowing. That energy is sort of just stagnant compared to how it could be. And if you have that juice flowing and operating, then it does keep you young. Now, men are the opposite because they have to learn how to not ejaculate in order to stay young. <laughs> it's kind of funny, opposites, right? So the way that is, is I'm teaching men how to, and you know, educating them how to not let go of that life force ejaculate to learn the mastery of their bodies so that they're just recycling it instead of letting it go and they can still have their orgasm. In fact, one of the benefits is, is that you can have as many orgasms as you want when you know how to keep the ejaculate inside because you're not depleting yourself anymore, which basically aid is aging them faster. Um, if they are just letting go of the ejaculate every time, which for a lot of men is every day. And so you can imagine the cumulative effect of like letting go of the best of you every day that comes out of your body and then just is usually wasted. So it's better to keep that part inside, learn the techniques to do that. It becomes natural birth control, which is beautiful and very supportive of women <laughs> and it also um you know allows men to just stay a lot more energetic and know how to channel that energy into their career and their relationships and to stay young that way because they're keeping that life force for themselves now and you know there's also ways of like in the meantime, like, obviously, if you, you have to seek out, you know, the training to be able to pull that off, because that's a little more advanced and unknown at this moment. But in the meantime, you know, at least rub it into your body. Um, there are cultures that ingest it back in by mixing it with juice or whatever, and then taking it back into their body um, so that it's not wasted so much. So that's something to think about, too. So anyway, I just wanted, I just thought that would be a real hip thing to share because I was like, wow, you know, this is disclosed in like a matter of two minutes probably in the uh, 
Avatar movie, new Avatar water movie, and so, you know, it was like easily missed, but I caught it because of what I know about these things, and I was like, oh, that is so cool that they just came out and said that, you know, so I wanted to kind of um, unpack that for you in case you missed it, because it's really key.